Have I got a good one for you today? What's better than flying above the clouds with seven balloons and all your paramotor buddies? Get to see a car attached to a balloon after midnight. And my takeoff on the Hadron 3 almost ends in disaster. And I get to fly over Snowdon. So on my way to Chirk Airfield on the M54 right now. Time is Thursday, 12 o'clock noon. Weather forecast is looking good. I'm hoping at some point over the weekend that I'll get to see Mount Snowdon. So we arrived, the tent is up. That's really the third one here, so we've got here early doors. So got Regina's on temperature 12 degrees C. It's the Chirk Paramotor flying in Wales, in North Wales. It's the Thursday evening going up for a late bimble with Chris and we fly along the Dee Valley here, along the viaducts and aqueducts. End up at this castle which is a medieval castle which was probably built in the 1260s and it's called Castel Dinas Bran, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, translated as Crow's Fortress or Fortress of Bran. So not a very long flight for this first one and get to see a lovely sunset and come back down for a landing. It's probably only up for about half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that. Nice, that was good. 5.30 on Friday morning and kettle on, can't really speak very well, so I'm going to have a coffee. Friday morning at 20 past 6, there's Simon, ready to go. I always get nervous, it's really weird. Done nearly 500 hours and I feel like a beginner. That's the way it goes. Wet grass, no wind, Hadron 3. Nice. So it looks like it wants to go to the right. So I thought I'd double check my lines before launch, but obviously not. I thought I'd check that. I checked my lines. Cravat on a Hadron 3. I thought that was a freaking long run. Look at that. Line over. What a Alright, I'll stop chastising myself and get relayed out. Otherwise, perfect launch. I was I, I was literally running faster than I can I've ever run in my life. And I thought this is something not right. Looked up. Oh, look at my skid. I landed so fast that I couldn't freaking run. I managed to stay on my feet. I was falling backwards. Managed to get momentum to fall forwards and then hit the side of the cage, but no damage. Luckily, got away with it. Let's try that again, shall we? So I cut out all the swear words and chastising of myself and finally get launched with no problem. So it just goes to show you really you need to double check your lines. Hadron 3 does have unsheathed lines at the top in my defence but um, no excuse really. So in the future I will be double checking all of my lines. And on the way out I could see that there's four or five paramotors coming back the other way and in the distance it's looking pretty murky and dark. So I make a left turn along the Kefen viaduct and along the Dee Valley with Chris and hopefully we can avoid the rain. 
I can't pronounce this, but this aqueduct is the longest in Britain and the highest canal aqueduct in the world and is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was completed in 1805. So at this point Chris has already turned back and I can see in the distance that there's rain coming from all directions so I decide to make a turn at this point. Uh, go fully trims out on the Hadron 3 with a tailwind. I'm actually doing about a ground speed of about 53 miles per hour and head straight back for the field. I can see the rain is coming towards the airfield as well so I think by the time I get there it's going to be raining. So not a brilliant start to the fly-in, let's hope that Saturday and Sunday are better. As you can see it's not flyable right now. We're dicking about in the viaduct, isn't that right Steve? So five of us decide to go for a lovely walk along the Dee Valley, along the river, looking at the aqueduct and viaduct. We have an ice cream, cup of tea, and actually it's quite sunny, although too windy to fly, but uh, a lovely walk along the river. Okay, so it's Friday evening. Well, there's been pants. Actually, it's been quite nice. It's been sunny, but way too windy to fly. So it's quarter past eight, and we're gonna go for a little bimbly bimbly boo. Go on, Steve. Nice. As you can probably see, the winds are still very strong. I decide to go up anyway, it's 8.30. Uh, just go up for, uh, for half an hour. It's not raining, um, but strong winds still. Temperature is 7 degrees C up here, I'm at 3,500. Quite murky, strong wind. Just on the very edge of flyable. But could resist a little bimble. What I'm here for, after all, not many other people up. In fact, I can't see anyone up. few guys have been up but most people are sensible. This Chirk Castle down there, let's just have a little look at that, I haven't seen that. So this is Chirk Castle built in 1295 as part of King Edward I's chain of fortresses across the north of Wales and guards the entrance to the Keirog Valley. So not a particularly interesting flight that one, just wanted to go up for a fly as I'm at a fly-in and hope the weather tomorrow is a bit better. Make a cup of coffee, need a coffee before we fly. Good sleep. Oh, oh. fantastic, like a baby. <laughs> How you feeling mate? Doing before you. Oh look at this, look at this supermodel. <laughs> <laughs> mate is ready to go. It is 6.53, forecasted wind direction is easterly and we have a very light westerly, which means it will switch once the sun pokes out. Mentally prepare myself for another wing layout. Hey bro. So it's going to switch very soon, sun is out. First one up. The race is on to get up before the wind switches. So after double checking my lines, uh, we have a very, very light westerly wind on the ground, but easterly higher up. Managed to get off the ground on my Hadron 3 on the, the wet grass 
And we just go straight up to 3,000 feet with um, Michael. And I've heard that there's going to be some balloons. So we hang around for a bit, waiting for everyone else to launch. And then in a the distance, I can spot the balloons. So we make a turn and go straight for the balloons. As everyone knows, balloons are a magnet for power motors. Now we do have permission to fly near the balloons and Bobby's in one of them. So we are flying around for a bit and just having a great time. It's quite unusual to be with balloons above clouds. So it's a particularly special time and a whole load of power motors as well at the same time. So I have my head on a swivel. Here's Shane doing some impressive acro for their balloonists. Top skills there. Sunshine, balloons, clouds, mountains, green, green land, rivers, lakes, country houses. Magic flight. Is he coming up? What's he doing? So I spot a couple of balloons near Ellesmere. One of them's come down. One of them looks like it's not taking off. Then head to Chomley Castle, which has been with the Chomley family since the 12th century. Um, the present house was built in the early 19th century for George Cholmondley, who designed most of it himself. So if you into your country manors and castles, this area of Great Britain is absolutely full of them. So we then head over to Peckforton Castle, which is a Victorian country house built in the style of a medieval castle in Cheshire. It's built in the mid 19th century for John Tolmash, a wealthy landowner and member of parliament, built in the Gothic style and is now a grade one listed building. It's now used as a hotel and for events such as weddings and conferences. Still looks good though, even though it's not completely authentic. And then just across the valley on this kind of crag is Beeston Castle, which is a former royal castle in Cheshire, built in the 1220s by Renalf de Blomville, 6th Earl of Chester, on his return from the Crusades. In 1237, Henry III took over the ownership of Beeston, and it was kept in good repair until the 16th century, where it was damaged during the English Civil War in 1646. So continuing on in Chef Cheshire we come to Eton Hall which is the country house of the Duke of Westminster which covers around 10,800 acres of land it includes formal gardens, parkland, farmland and woodland and it's the first substantial house built in the 17th century and was replaced by a larger house in the early 19th century. The current house was built in the 20th century and has been recased to give it the appearance of a French chateau. And is currently owned by Hugh Grosvenor, the seventh Duke of Westminster, aged 32. I haven't done much low flying due to the wind, so I decided to just drop down and have a little foot drag across the fields here and then head on to Erdig Hall, which is a Grade 1 listed building. It was built in the 18th century for Joshua Edsbury, the High Sheriff of Denbyshire, and donated to the National Trust in 1973. It's now open to the public. On my way back to the field now along the Keffen Viaduct, which is a Grade 2 listed railway viaduct in Wrexham County, designed by Henry Robertson, completed in 1848, built of sandstone and brick, and spans the River Dee. In 1928, it was the site of a train collision.
what it's all about. Not the flying, the breakfast. I really want to see Snowdon, so we three of us decide to, f to drive to Carnarvon rather than face these strong easterly winds. So I've just arrived at the field in Carnarvon. Let's wait for the wind to die down a bit and then we'll get up and going. Awesome! It's five o'clock. Probably going to wait till six, half six, for our launch. Just setting up. So to see Snowdon from Chirk Airfield would be about a three hour flight in nil wind. And as the winds are quite strong, we decide to drive over instead. is off. Nice. So reverse launch on the Nucleon XX because of a strong sea breeze. It's been quite hot today we're near the coast so if I'm honest with you I didn't even think about it. We really should have planned that in. So really excited about this flight. So we, all three of us have taken off. It's Michael, Chris and myself. So we decide to fly north to see the Menai Bridge and then over to Penryn Castle and then head over to the mountains. But at this point I can see Chris has flying low and then he lands out. So I'm thinking, oh no, Chris may not make it round. What the hell's going on? Chris has landed, Chris has landed out. After five minutes, it's texted it. Boost some altitude. So it turns out to be nothing serious, and Chris accidentally hit the kill switch while plugging in his speed bar. This here is Menai Suspension Bridge, designed by Thomas Telford and completed in 1826 and makes it the world's first major suspension bridge. Still carries road traffic and is Grade 1 listed and was built to provide communications between London and Dublin via the port of Holyhead. This here is Bangor. Have I pronounced that right? So Chris has now launched. He is on his way over to the mountains. So in the meantime, I'm going to drop down and have a look at Penryn Castle, which is originally a medieval fortified manor house. Samuel Wyatt reconstructed the property in the 1780s and the present building was created between 1822 and 1837 to designs by Thomas Hopper. So we're now heading over to the mountains. It does get quite bumpy here, you can't really see it on the GoPro. So we decide to get some altitude up to about 5,000 feet. Uh, we have a planned route along the valleys of the Snowdonia National Park. But I just throw that all out the window and just make a beeline for Snowdon. What an amazing sight. So at 5,000 feet, in case you're wondering, it's quite smooth. Um, lower down it's quite choppy, but the sun is now setting so hopefully the air will calm down. Um, but it's very calm up here at this altitude. There's Snowdon, it's the highest mountain in Wales with an elevation of 1,085 metres or 3,500 feet. It's actually the highest point in the British Isles outside the Scottish Highlands. And the summit can also be reached by the Snowdon Mountain Railway, a rack railway that was opened in 1896. You can see the railway down there snaking down the mountain. There's the summit station at the top. I've got to say, this has got to be one of my all-time memorable flights. I have quite a lot of those now, but this has got to be up there in at least the top five. Despite being well-dressed with two pairs of gloves and my um, down puffer jacket, 
and my flying suit, I'm getting a little bit chilly. So once I get over this mountain here, I decide to drop down a little bit and warm up. Ah, smell that fresh air. Smell pine, actually. Something. Oh, they're a lot warmer down here, geez. 1,400 feet now. Was it 5,000? They dropped down a lot. So now heading towards Port Madog, which was founded in the 19th century by William Maddox. He built a seawall, the Cobb, to reclaim land from the sea for farming use was a port for local slate but it's now just used for shopping and tourism and over to black rock sands i know that some of you that watch my videos have been here before looks like a lovely place to go on holiday with if you get good weather taking a quick turn here to see where the other two are i only see one and i think michael has gone back because he's cold so chris just follows me around towards crickeith castle This here is Crickeath Castle, built by Llewellyn the Great of the Kingdom of Gwyneth in the 1230s. It's heavily modified following its capture by English forces of Edward I in the late 13th century. It's now open to the public. So now heading north over the Arfon transmitter here, it's about 2,000 feet high. Uh, Chris is on my left, and there's Carnarvon Airport in the top left there. And have a quick look at Carnarvon Castle, which is originally a Mott and Bailey castle built in the late 11th century, but was replaced by the current stone structure by King Edward I in 1283. What an absolutely amazing flight. I just can't put into words how much I enjoyed that one. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> nice, nice feet. Thank you. I help you with this. Oh, thanks. My best. You enjoy that? The fly ever. Uh, uh. And best day. Four and a half hours altogether. Amazing. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Good. It's cold up there, though. Good, mate, so cold. That's why I came back. Oh, really? Oh. Because I lost you. I wasn't sure who who was with me and who wasn't. Because in uh, one moment you you went down, very down, yes? Yeah, yeah, down yeah, down, you know? yeah. Because I got cold. I thought I'm going to go lower. I decided I'm going back at the same point. Dodgy start, but probably one of the best flights I've ever had. Yeah, amazing. What about you? Awesome. Absolutely brilliant. When I came into land, I couldn't remember if there was a power line across there or not, so I stayed high and so ended up landing halfway down the airfield. <laughs> I just I deviated from the route completely because I just saw and snow I and I thought, <laughs> I've got to go over it. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just watching the wings from the distance and I was like, no, they're pretty stable. They're not Yeah. <laughs> I must admit, when I first got to the, to the castle, when we first went into the mountains, it was like really, really yeah. bumpy. I believe what I'm seeing.
No. I don't know what's going on. What's happening? that mind-blowing evening and a lovely sleep i decided to take it easy on the sunday morning Past eight, bit late to be honest. There's been some interesting takeoffs, wind has been variable. So it's the Sunday morning, and I decide to go for a lovely flight. Very light winds, lovely sunny weather. Uh, quite a lot of people are not flying today, and there's not a lot of runway because. Apparently this is Wales' largest car boot sale, uh, which took up most of the runway. So we had to take off from a little patch of grass at the top. Um, finally managed to do it. And the plan for this one is to head again down the Dee Valley, past this old castle on the hill, uh, towards Barla Lake and then Lake Vernwy. Don't know if I pronounced that right. To the Vernwy Dam and then over to the old Oswestry Hill Fort on to Halston Hall and Whittington Castle. There's a little railway down there. It's noticed. Let's fly along the river low for a little while. Watching out for power lines. And power lines across the valley, sometimes that happens. Keeping my eye out for that. They usually put little balloons, little bollards on it. This was a really relaxing flight, just flying along the river, along the Dee Valley, towards Snowdonia, and just really chilling out Sunday morning, really enjoying it. Plenty of places to land out, engine fails on the right. Power lines. This is a privately owned luxurious Victorian mansion. It was built for a Scottish gentleman, Henry Robertson, who bought the house uh, in 1868. It has 22 bedrooms, very nice. So at the end of this river, the River Dee is Barla Lake, which is 3.7 miles long by a half a mile wide, and was the largest natural body of water in Wales before it was the level was raised by Thomas Telford. 
And at the end of the lake, I make a straight line flight across the Snowdonian Mountains towards Lake Vernwy. And I was actually a little bit nervous at this point because the, the winds were, were quite turbulent coming up the valley there, a lot of rotor. And it's actually very, very remote. So I'm just praying that my engine doesn't fail at this point. Very few houses around, very few roads. It's just tracks around the place. Um, but thankfully, everything's fine. And this is Lake Vernwy, which is a reservoir built in the 1880s. It's a man-made reservoir for Liverpool Corporation Waterworks to supply Liverpool with fresh water. This is the Vernwy Dam, completed in 1888 and was the first large stone-built dam built in the UK. So I'm going to fly back along the valley now towards Oswest Street and the old Oswest Street Hill Fort which is an Iron Age hill fort and one of the best preserved hill forts in the UK. Uh, earliest occupation of the site began in the 8th century BC and continued up until the Roman conquest of Britain. This here is Holston Hall, a country house first built around 1690. It was given protected status in January. And now over Whittington and Whittington Castle, which is originally a modern bailey castle and replaced in the 13th century by one with buildings around a courtyard. And on the way back I've already been over Chirk Castle but I wanted to have a look at it in the brighter conditions. So fly along Chirk Castle and then come back in for a landing and at this point my GoPro battery dies. So I hope you enjoyed that. I absolutely loved it. So thanks to Mark Meds and to the organisers for putting it on. Heartily recommend flying that region if you've not done it before. And my next video is the Wingland Wacky Weekend. So if you want to see that one, I uh, hope to get that out within the next week or so. And if you want to see the photos, check the link in the description.